In this tutorial, you will learn all basic functions of the Adobe Photoshop extension Stoll Artwork. To fully understand the functionality, you will need some experience in knitwear design in Adobe Photoshop. Most designers are familiar with Adobe Photoshop, but it was never specifically meant for knitwear design. That's why we created the Stoll Artwork extension. After you've downloaded it, go to the Window menu in Photoshop, click on Extensions, then Stoll Artwork. Or you can also go to Find Extensions on Exchange, which will take you directly to the Creative Cloud page. Here's a quick overview of how it works. We'll look at each function in more detail later on, one by one. Anytime you need help using the Stoll Artwork extension, you can look it up on our help page, which you can find here. To open a new file, click on New Artwork. These are two knitting technique checks. They show a selection of the areas which are to be corrected, based on the gauge. Here's where you can enter the stitch densities. On the top right corner, there's a menu which gives you more settings. And finally, the ruler setup for knitting lets you reposition the rulers. Right, let's create a new artwork. To create a new artwork in Photoshop, you have to enter some information. First, you have to give your artwork a name. Then, choose the gauge. In this case, we want to knit on a 14 gauge machine. If you point your cursor at the I symbol, you can get a bit more info on how to deal with gauges. Then, you put in the number of needles in rows, for example, 700 by 500. This link opens the Stahl homepage, where you get more information about the working widths of all the knitting machines. Stitches are either stretched or compressed according to the knitting technique. They are hardly squared. The best way to work out the stitch density is to count your needles and rows of your knitted fabric within a certain area. For example, 10 centimeters squared and put it in here. Here you'll find Stoll presets for a few stitch constructions. In this case, for Jacquard. These are meant to give you an idea of how to create your own stitch density presets. If you click on the eye symbol, more information on the knit technique will appear. If you often use the same materials, gauges and finishing methods, you can create your own presets. You can now select your user preset. Just click the Save Preset button. Once you click OK to confirm your settings, the artwork will open and a pixel grid will appear on the canvas. You can change the stitch density settings at any stage if you need to. As we mentioned before, the menu gives you the relevant settings for different stitch densities. Before you create your own stitch density preset, you'll need to have a trial swatch made on the respective gauge, with the right yarn and applied finishing method. Then count the stitches within a certain area. If you're not sure how to read stitch densities from a swatch, you can get help with that on our help page. Before you create your own stitch density, you should go to Settings and choose either Centimeters or Inches. 
The menu also gives you the option to remove, create, import, or export stitch densities. Import and export functions can be extremely useful when you're sharing your presets with others. The Photoshop rulers count from the upper left corner. But with netting, you usually find the first stitch of the first row in the bottom left corner of your canvas. The ruler setup for knitting automatically adjusts the Photoshop presets. In the info box, you can see that you are now at the first needle on the first row. The Stahl artwork extension lets you simulate a stitch density digitally. Generally, Photoshop works with square pixels. By entering a certain stitch density, say 40 needles in 60 rows, and turning on the stitch distortion preview, you can see how the pixels change. They are clearly stretched because every pixel simulates one stitch. To see how this works even better, you can draw a circle. First, you need to deactivate the anti-alias, so you don't get any color transitions. If you turn on the stitch distortion preview, you can see how the circle will be knitted. To avoid this, you have to change the artwork and the proportions. You can use the transformations tool, but it's important to select nearest neighbor. Now you can pull the graphic until it's a right circle again. This is how your fabric will look after knitting. By turning off the preview, you can see the result, which is what the technician will get. The other way is to put a picture directly on the stitch distortion preview. The stitch distortion preview speeds up the pattern development process by cutting out delays. The Stahl artwork extension also lets you check a float jacquard technique based on a gauge. The graphic is being verified row by row before showing you which areas should be modified. Here you can see the different distances between the colors. Now we want to knit this pattern with a gauge of 5. By activating the float jacker check, you can see all of the areas which are longer than 5 needles. This means that the float is too long for a gauge of 5. Technically, Longer floats are knittable, but from a quality point of view, that wouldn't be ideal because of snagging. As a designer, you can either draw something in this area or accept it as it is. If you draw a pixel in between, it doesn't select this area because it isn't too long anymore. Adapt or accept. The decision is yours. It all depends on what you plan to do with your design. The next check is for iCat plating fabrics. With iCat plating, the number of pixels for each color should be at least 2 inches, which directly depends on which gauge you use. If you have a gauge of E18, each color field should have a minimum width of 36 pixels. When you run the Stoll iCat plating check, it shows you the areas where the width for each color doesn't match the minimum length. In this case, the areas are shorter than 36 pixels. Now you can extend those areas and run the check again. You can ignore the selected areas on the borders because the minimum distance there is only one inch. It's important to apply the check on the activated layers. Once you're happy with your artwork, 
you can save it as a bitmap file. To export files to M1+, you have to follow a set procedure. First, go to Image Mode and select Indexed Colors. Then go to Save As, select BMP, and save your artwork in an 8-bit format. In the last step, the designer sends the file for further processing to the manufacturer. This is how the file opens in M1+. The Stahl Pattern software M1 Plus greatly improves the production process by generating patterns for highly optimized knitting processes. We hope you find this tutorial useful. If you have any comments or suggestions, let us know in the comments. Happy designing!